So if you would like a copy of last week's work, you can go into the computer window. And then inside of computer, there will be the network location. And inside of classroom data network location, we can go over to uh, the campus Android folder. And what we worked on last week, or last time, has a date right there. So if you'd like a copy of what I ended up with last time, copy that whole folder. And we'll get started from there. If you'd like to use your version of it, that's fine. But if you do use my version, and if I say, let's go to line 17, and yours looks different, well, you'll have to figure out how your lines are different. But uh, here is a copy of my work. So I, I'm going to get a copy of that from the network folder and put it onto my flash drive. And then I'm going to put today's date on it. Usually I update, I make a copy of the folder, I update the date, and then that way I can uh, work on it with today's. Question? Well, bring your flash drive and I'll give you a copy of my... Okay, I can't give you my current one, but I think I have an extra one here. You can use it from the desktop, but remember when you turn off your computer, uh, if you didn't save it elsewhere, you're going to lose it. Yes. Okay, so I have a copy of the work. It's I put today's date on it. That's optional, but I, I'm putting today's date on it so I can work on a new copy uh, from today. If I had, if I continue to use my version from a previous day and I make a big mistake, you know, I might lose something. So I usually make a copy of the folder, and in that folder, work on today's work. So I'm going to open the folder. The point is, I created the HTML5 template file and I made a copy to work on the project. That's got the, the, the name, my SDCE. But actually, this template version, if you still have a template, is slightly outdated. The one we're going to work on today. Now, this should be basic computer stuff. I shouldn't really be going into much detail about this concept. We're going to uh, work on our copy here and make it the brand new template and you can delete the old template or save it as something else. But that brand new file of today will be our starting point. So inside of the mobile website, let's open up the index file. And we've got this project that works pretty well, but I want to change some things about it to make it a little bit more modern. One of the things is, uh, and a student noted this previously, um, we've got a section, data role page, header, data role header, and article, data role content. Data role content is actually deprecated, meaning it's old technology. If we look up the documentation at jQueryMobile.com, it says data role equals content is deprecated as of version 1.4. 
When version 1.5 comes out, they're going to remove that functionality. Now, I don't know why they would really do that. I'm sure they've got a good reason behind it if you read the documentation. But uh, we're going to have to change articles so that it's got the more modern version of the code. And it's a little more cumbersome, and I have trouble remembering it also just because I'm not used to it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to make a, a copy here. I'm sorry, we're going to make it. We're going to make a change. So um, on the line 42 or so, instead of it saying data role content, remove that data role content chunk, and then you're going to change that to say instead simply role in quotes main. and then class equals quotes UI dash content. This should still behave the same as before, but now this is the more modern version, and I think it's a little cumbersome, but we just have to memorize it that this is it. Alright, so this is the change that we needed to make here. No more data role equals page. And I liked it. I'm going to miss it because it was easy to remember. Now I've got to remember role equals main and class UI, class equals UI content. UI dash whatever is are things related to jQuery mobile that we will see over and over. So UI dash is just something that's related to jQuery mobile. If you use other um, JavaScript libraries, they have oftentimes their own little prefix. For example, if you use the Angular JavaScript library, it's often prefixed with ng for Angular. And this is just saying, well, there is a class, which basically is CSS. There's a CSS selector that makes this article tag look like something. And what used to work was the data role equals content, and now it's got to be this. And then I suppose role main it's just another part of the jQuery mobile specification that says this is how you should do it. So this is going to be, this is kind of optional at the moment with jQuery 1.4, which is what we're using. But when 1.5 comes out, this is no longer optional. You have to do it this way. So we might as well do it this way. The page should still look the same. If suddenly it goes berserk, well, check your spelling and make sure it's all typed correctly. The other thing we're going to do is um, we're also going to add to to the sections an extra data attribute that will help us create more advanced features. We have this nav bar at the moment. When we go from page to page, we don't the pages don't work yet. But when we go from page to page, we would normally have some header text at the top, and this header text we're going to define it explicitly 
within another data attribute of the section. So the section is going to have an ID and a title. And if they're the same thing, then later on, when we make our navbar work more properly, we will get this automatic persistent navbar throughout the document. It might not make sense, just trust me. So here's what here's what I'm saying we need to do. We're going to back up to where we've got section on line 16. We've got data role page ID page 1. We're going to change a few things here. First, instead of sim simply being page 1, because once we've got seven screens, page 2 doesn't make sense. But about makes sense. Or contact us makes sense, not calling it page 3 or page 12 or whatever. This is going to be our home screen, so our ID will be home as well, lowercase. In this case, the, the order does not matter, but I like to put the ID as the last attribute of a tag. So I'm going to back up before the attribute of ID and add the brand new data-title equals and also call it home. And here I can use a capital letter because that text will appear on top of the header. So we've got data title and an ID. We're going to use this data title later on to actually make that text appear on top of the screen. Right now it won't, but we're setting ourselves up for it to work properly a little later. Right, so we've got section, data role page, data title home, ID home. This, in this case, is capital letters. You might say, why capital? Because this will be displayed on screen. Uh, so I want it to have a capital letter so that it looks human readable. Everything else is code, so it's all lowercase. Line 25, we've got that class that makes that home button stay highlighted like it was pressed. We're going to do it a little bit better with another technique. So actually we're gonna remove line 25 completely. <clears throat> so on line 25 completely remove that class equals just remove the whole line And of course, we have to be careful here because now on line 24, it's incomplete. It's missing the angle bracket. The angle bracket was on line 25, which we just deleted. So make sure you close your angle bracket at the end of line 24. There's a few references to data themes which are empty, which are actually kind of like vestigial remnants from Kodika. Um, so we're going to remove them. You see you've got your button of home, art, and PC, and they all have a data theme. Delete the whole attribute. We don't need it. We don't need to style each individual button, and besides that's not doing anything. It doesn't have a value, so it's not doing anything. It's just vestigial code. So remove the data themes for all three of those buttons. <clears throat> it's starting on line 24. And then it's got a default data transition of fade, which is okay, but uh, this is just personal what you want to add here. I'm going to change these three data transitions from fade to flip, just so that it's kind of fun and obvious. Maybe it's too fun. You can put whatever you want there or leave it, but I'm going to change these to flip. 
once we have actual screens, a home screen, an about screen, a contact screen, I want to go from each page to page and I want a little flip animation. Right now it's going to fade and it's okay, but I want to flip. Which line is that? 24. That's delete that one. 25 was deleted. And then lastly, these hrefs right here are all pointing to something called page one id page one which doesn't exist we've got an id of home and eventually we're going to have a page a screen full for art and for pc so again on line 24 we're going to change that to href pound home on 29 href pound art and on 34 href pound pc these of course will not work yet but we're we have an idea of how this should work right we drew that wireframe <coughs> we're just uh, making sure our code is um, is aligning with our idea I'm just going to check my code is working so far. Nothing. I, I should not experience any weirdness. But it's just a good idea to do a quick check. It's all behaving the same. Except, of course, for the, for the blue highlighting that went away. But that's fine. We'll make it work better in a moment. Okay, so this was visually not very, nothing really happened visually. Uh, behind the scenes, a few important things have happened. And we'll do two more important things. Right now, the way this project is set up is that I have one screen, the home screen. Eventually, I want an art screen and a PC screen. And we have the knowledge to accomplish that. We, we should understand that if we've got section, everything that encompasses a whole screen. So there's a section for header and for home and for art and everything. And so if we want a brand new screen for art, then we just need a new section and give it a new title and ID. The problem with that will be, which we saw previously, was when we created a first page and clicked the button to go to a second page, that second page didn't automatically look like the first page because it was a completely different page. It'll be worse once we've got a nav bar because if we don't design a nav bar and copy it and paste it into every screen, we won't have a nav bar. There's a way around that though. Instead of putting the header, which includes my nav bar, and the footer, which can include other content, instead of putting those two elements in a <coughs> section, we can put them outside of sections, and then they will automatically appear on all sections, on all screens. So the old way to do this would be to copy and paste the header and the footer into every section. But then now you've got three different headers and footers that you have to contend with. We'll do this the newer way, which is to put the headers and the footers outside of the section, write a little JavaScript, and then now we'll have this cool header and footer that is persistent. That one header and footer will be used for every one of our three or 30 pages. Imagine if we had 30 screens in our document, then we'd have to have 30 individual headers and footers. So here's what we'll do. This whole header block, for mine it's from line 17 to 40. This whole header, I'm going to cut it and paste it before the section of, of home. So from about line 17 to 40, 
to 40, which is all my header. I'm going to cut that and paste it above home, outside of the section. Headers outside of the section. It's going to be independent of the page that it's on. This will work out better for us in the future. Well, on mine it was about 40, but look where your header starts and where your header tag ends. Just place where you get after they hit the hit between. You're going to take the whole header and you're going to paste it before section after body. If we save it and run it, don't save it and run it. It's not working yet, but we're getting there. So we move the header outside of the section. It's going to now exist and, and work outside of a, of a page. We're going to do the same thing for the footer. So if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you should see your footer section, which on mine it's from about line 92 to 96. We're going to do the same thing. Select the whole footer chunk cut it and paste it after the section before the JavaScript. Traditionally they did, but that was cumbersome because if we had seven sections then we'd have seven headers and footers. Here if we put them outside of the headers, uh, outside of the sections, we only have one. And therefore, there's only one thing to edit. Previously, we'd have to edit all seven of them. The header would have been for section. section. And then conversely, the footer goes outside of section <coughs> before the JavaScript. Okay, so, like I said, if we save this and run it, it's not quite working how I want. Where did they go? I put them outside of the section so they're not visible. That wouldn't make sense. They're outside of a section so I can't see them. We're going to write a little JavaScript to make them come back and to function properly. The point of this eventually is we're only going to need one pair of header and footer for all 40 of our sections. So this JavaScript, for the moment, we're going to write it. I'm not going to go into too much detail of exactly what it does. Um, we'll just trust that it works. So what we need to do is go to, uh, at about line 99 or so, I have a reference to jQuery, and then jQuery Mobile, and then Kodika. Dot extra dot js. This is our extra, our external JavaScript file, where we want to have a central location <coughs> for all our JavaScript. So, this code we're about to write, we can write it in this file, this index.html file, or we can write it in this JS file. Either way will work. But the point of writing it in an external JS file is now any of our pages, any of our HTML pages that we connect to that document will inherit the features of JavaScript that we're about to write. If we wrote the JavaScript only in this file, it would only work in this file. Eventually, we're going to have a file for contact or map or you know login. 
And if we put in all of our JavaScript in a central location, they can all use that code. So we're going to need to open this codica.ext.js file in your project folder. You should see jQuery Mobile 145. I'm sorry, you should see Codica external.js, not the CSS, the JS file. You want to right click it and select, of course, to edit in Notepad. We saw this briefly last time that the Codica. JS file and the Kodika CSS file are central locations to store our, uh, our, our custom CSS and our custom JavaScript. So on line two here, I'm going to write the dollar symbol, open close parentheses, semicolon. This is a shorthand that we're about to do something with jQuery. Uh, sometimes you see it spelled out longhand. I believe it's like that. Well, it'll work just like this. Just a shorthand. What we're about to do is jQuery, which is a version of JavaScript. That gives us a lot of shorthands, shortcuts. We're going to actually divide up this expression here, a couple of spaces like that. So we're just going to break the, the parentheses and on the first line here, we're going to write function, open, close, parentheses, open, close, curly brace. So we're writing this function. This is common practice where we write a function that basically um, defines everything in our app. Uh, previously, maybe we wrote function login. And the things that relate to logging in are stored in that function. Well, this one is more like a global function that will, that we, that will let us define many aspects of our app. This is also standard. I'm kind of getting this as just standard jQuery practices. What's also standard is to divide these angle brackets into a couple of lines as well. But it's going to look a little cluttered, so I'm going to divide it like that. Right? I move the angle bracket to its own line on the same line as where I closed the parentheses, just to save a little space. And now basically, inside of this function is where I would write all my JavaScript. This, um, what's the official name of it? An immediately invoked function expression. It just means that this is now immediately usable as JavaScript. And this is, you often run into this when you're dealing with jQuery uh, because it's just a more modern, more efficient way to do things. So this is just sort of standard. This is what we'll often run into, this is often what we'll do. Um, with our simple project at the moment, perhaps we don't perhaps even need this, but to future proof it, um, we're going to set ourselves up this way. On line three inside of the function, what we need to do is write a little more jQuery, some jQuery selectors here, so that we can um, reactivate those nav bars, those headers and footers that disappeared. So we're going to use the dollar symbol again. That's the shorthand for jQuery. Open close parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we'll have open and close quotes. Do you remember when we did um, document, don't write this, but document.get element by ID? Um, that, well, let me complete it. Document.get element, element by ID. That's JavaScript, that's pure JavaScript. But that can be shortened down to. that. That's the point of jQuery. Write less, do more. These two lines are pretty much equivalent. Line 4 is plain old JavaScript and line 5 is jQuery. So taking 
you know, that's a little bit less than half of the lines of code, of the characters of code, and shrinking it down. Imagine we have this 40 times per project. Get element by ID, get element by ID, get element by ID. Well, those little bits add up to a lot of bits. So jQuery, write less, do more. I'm going to leave this on my notes over here if you'd like, but it's not part of anything. It's a comment, obviously, so it won't do anything. I'm just showing you that the shorthand. That's what I'm getting at right here. We're going to reference something in our project the short way. And this is just one of those things sort of about, again, we'll write this and we'll trust me because this is straight from the documentation of jQueryMobile.com. So inside of these quotes, we're saying in square brackets, uh, we're saying data dash roll equals single quotes navbar. We're saying there's something on the screen in the HTML file. There's something in the HTML file that has a data role of navbar. Just like here. <coughs> there's something in the document that has an ID of thing. Right here, we're saying the same thing. There's something in the document that has an ID of thing. <coughs> there's something in the document that has data role navbar. There's only one navbar in my whole project at the moment, so that makes sense. We're referencing it. We're referencing it so that then at the end here, dot, we can run a method, navbar, the navbar method, like we had alert. We had the alert method that made a pop-up. We had the prompt method that made a pop-up that asked for your name. Here we have a jQuery method called navbar, initializes this as a navbar. Is, I'm sorry, the second nav bar is like a, a method. Say that again. Oh, the nav bar is like a, like a method. Like a, like a function. Like a, like a you speak up just a little bit. Oh, the nav bar. Mm -hmm. It says a method, right? Like a yes, bar. sorry, a method. Exactly. It's a method of jQuery, um, a function, a, you know, a reserved command of jQuery. So that basically this thing on the screen, uh, you can use it as a, as a navbar. Next line. So make sure you ended the line there with semicolon. Next line, we're going to reference the, uh, the header and the footer and make it behave like a header and a footer. So again, dollar sign, open close parentheses, open close quotes. Uh, open, close, square brackets. We're using all the symbols. Data role, single quotes, header. Remember that we need to use single quotes here because if we use the double quote for header, like we have in the HTML file, we'll suddenly confuse JavaScript because we've got, we'll have open, double quote, close, double quote, gibberish. Open, double quote, and double quote, gibberish. Here it's open, Double quote, close double quote, open single quote, close single quote. Yes? Didn't you say earlier really that data role equals something? Data role equals content is the, is the problem, is the old version. We still are going to use data role headers and nav bars and other things. Page. It's just the content. And that's, I don't like that. It's inconsistent. I want them all to be data roles, like I've been used to. But the powers that be at jQuery mobile say, no more data role equals content. Now it's got to be role equals class. No, no, role equals main, class equals UI dash content. More to remember. Up here I said, there is a nav bar. Let's make it work like a nav bar, basically. We've got a header. Let's make it work like a header. But we've got a header and a footer. So actually, we can reference them both at the same time. So, still inside of your quotes, add a, add a comma, and then 
brackets. So we're going to say there's a header and a footer. So that's data dash role, e role equals single quotes footer. Over here, I only need it to reference one thing, one object on the screen. Here, I want to reference two. So I've got a comma in between the first object and the second object. And end quote, end double quote, start double quote. <clears throat> At the very end of that, then we'll use the jQuery method dot toolbar. Make it work like a toolbar. Okay, save both files, because remember now we're working with index, and we're working with this JavaScript file. So you want to make sure both files are saved. If either one of them is read, it won't work. Remember, we've got that little... Oh, I haven't mentioned it yet, but we've got this save all button right here. These multiple disks, save all. Make sure you save all, <clears throat> and then run it. But be careful, because if you run this JavaScript file, you'll get JavaScript in your web browser. You want to run the index file. The index is the one that will render. So make sure both are saved. Let's run it. Let me check if mine worked, and then we'll take questions, because this might be complicated. You want to save and run your index file, and it should look like before. All of that worked to make it look exactly as before, but it's going to work better for us in the future. Let me pull up my code and pause here for a moment to help people. I'll pull up both of my lines of code and hopefully you can see that. Anyone need a little help? Yeah, but the name of the 
I think this is like a different look for someone. That's why I didn't know. All right, everyone. So, um, for those of you that need a little help, needed a little help, I, I, I showed you the console. So I'm going to remind everyone else here that didn't have a problem. You might get a problem a little later. Remember that when uh, when you're in your web browser, you can press F12 on the web browser and you'll get the console. Even though we might not have explicitly written anything to the console, if there is a problem that I can't figure out what happened, um, the console might might help me. So, you know, I, I had the example where where people's nav bars was dis were disappearing. A lot of people had a bit of that, so where's my nav bar? And I saw that if we looked in the console, it would say you misspelled something. So spell something okay 
is what I mean. So where's my navbar? I wrote all the code right. Well, F12 on your web browser brings up the console, and even though I never wrote anything to the console, there's something wrong with my code. Maybe this error here will quickly tell me, yeah, there's no such thing as navbars, but sometimes it's so subtle. And remember, the end of the line over here tells you, check your Kodika file line 3, column 1. So this is the console the, the, the console that will give us feedback with our code. We should get used to using that if suddenly something happens. Remember to check it before calling me over because then you might suddenly see, oh, I put a colon there instead of a semicolon. So let's see here. Okay, so the whole point of this is that our nav bars exist outside of the section. And it'll look more impressive once we have an, an art page and a PC page because then we'll click, we'll have, we'll have brand new content for that section, but these headers will automatically you know, follow us. In the old days, we would have to have a copy of all of them. Well, we need a little bit more code for this to work completely. Um, so we'll go back to our Kodika file. Let me show you something here. Did you see how I had my, my HTML file on one side and my JavaScript on another? If you want to do that, what you can do here in Notepad, right-click the tab of the file you want to put on a separate pane, right-click it, and then select Move to Other View at the bottom. And now you're going to have your HTML on one side and your JavaScript on the other. To put it back, you can right-click the, the tab again and, and put Move to Other View. You've only got two, two views, apparently, left and right. But if you want to see them both at once, you just move them to the other view. Okay, so continuing our code here. These, three, these lines 3 and 4 simply reactivated the um, functionality of the nav bars and of the headers and the footers. Uh, we want to add a little bit more code. This is for when we switch between screens so that those buttons actually work. Right now they might not work completely. So after line 4, enter on a new line here, and we're going to use jQuery again. So dollar, open close parentheses, semicolon, Remember, the semicolon ends a, ends a statement, so that semicolon is ending that one back here. This is here. So inside of the parentheses, this time, we're going to write document. Oops. Document, lowercase, of course. Uh, previously, we were targeting a very specific thing in, in our project, something called data roll header. Here, we're just saying, anywhere in the whole document, we're waiting for something to happen on the whole document. Um, we're saying uh, dot on, and then that has open and close parentheses. That has a method. We're going to see that a lot on as, a, as an event handler, meaning something happened. Did a click happen? Did a drag happen? Did the content load? Did, did it crash on an event? <clears throat> and the event that we're going to be paying attention to here is one of these special ones. So inside of the parentheses in quotes, this is where we might type, don't type this, but this is where we might type click. If there was a click on click, when a click happens, do something. We're not waiting for a click here, however. We're waiting for something that is known as page container change. That's all lowercase. Page container changed. This is a reserved word. Whenever the page container changes, do something. This is, this is what will further make our navbar work properly. This might be a really long line, so actually I'm going to break it up. Before the end of that parentheses, 
press enter a couple of times to break it to the next line, so now you have a sad face. And uh, you've got the on, open parentheses, close parentheses, so you just divide that like that. Back to line 5. We're saying once a page container changes, comma, space, run a function. This is an anonymous function because previously we've, we've, if we created our own function, we wrote function get my login. We invented a function called get my login. Here we're, there's no function that's already invented. We're just going to use an anonymous one, like a quick and dirty one that doesn't need to be fully defined. We just need it at this moment. So we're simply writing function, but it still needs an open and close curly brace. And this is going to be a few lines of code. So actually, I'm going to break that curly brace down to the next line. And just to clean this up a little bit, I'm going to pull that um, closing parentheses back to the same line. So you have a, two pairs of close this curly bracket, because that one goes back to the first anonymous function up there closing parentheses, going back again up to the very top. This closing curly one closes the one that I started right here for this anonymous function. And then this parentheses closes the on parenthesis. So inside of this function, we're going to do a few tricks here so that the navbar fully works. So inside of the function, line 6, we're going to create a variable called current. This is just going to store a reference to the current page. What's the name of the current page? All of our pages are going to have an ID. And remember, so we had ID and we also had data title equals something. Data title is the human readable name of the page. ID is the computer readable one. So I want to check what is the current, what does the current data title say? If I'm on the home screen, data title will say home. If I'm on the art screen, data title will say art. So we need to check what is that. And we're going to store it in a variable. So we're creating a variable equals. We're then um, filling it with data. We're going to use jQuery again. We're going to do this over and over and over with jQuery to, to basically let us target pieces of our document. That's what this will often let us do. We will get a reference to the, to the object on the screen. We have to reference it by a name. So quotes. And there's a built-in jQuery mobile it might be jQuery mobile or jQuery, but there's a built-in jQuery mobile class, so it starts with a dot called ui-page-active. This is just built in that jQuery mobile gives us feedback that there is an active page. Okay, well specifically about that active page, at the end we'll say dot JQM data capital D. This is a method to check the data dash title or the data dash role or the data dash transition. I want to check the data title. So in parentheses, semicolon, I want to say give me the title. So this is a way for us to get the, 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 the value, what's written inside of data-title. I know it doesn't look at all like what we wrote in the HTML, but this is just the way it is. This is the way this was designed to work. We use this method called JQM data, which is sort of shorthand to say, let's check what data-title is. This could be used. Instead, we put, data, we put page here. 
So it's basically checking what is data dash page, or I'm sorry, data dash role, data dash role. What's the role that could give us back page, button, dialogue? Right here, we're saying what's the data that's being stored in data dash title, uh, and put it inside of this variable. Don't forget to end the, the statement there with a semicolon at the end. Mm -hmm. um, did you say that uh, if you want to check the data role, then inside it, uh, the technical is going to be the role? Is that exactly. Yeah, okay. that's it. Okay, so the point of the point of getting that value, and just to remind you, back on the index file, that value is currently set to home. That's what we're accessing. This is written in the HTML. We're accessing it via JavaScript. Give me what that says, and then storing it into the variable current. The point of grabbing that is that then we can show that word on screen when we go from page 1 to page 2 to page 3. I want to grab that text, that data, and put it on screen. On screen, that would be where you've got the um, up here, header. Instead of that generically saying header, I want that to say home, or PC, or about us, or whatever we wrote down on data title. So next line. Using jQuery again, we are going to reference the data dash role header. After that square bracket, but still inside of the print, uh, the quote, we'll write h1. So this is saying, there's an element on screen called data role header, specifically a heading 1. That's what all of this is saying. We're, we're basically targeting some object on the screen. All of this is to, is to target an object in jQuery. If this were JavaScript, this would be like double the length to accomplish the same thing. And what we're saying then at the end of that, we're using the method dot text. We're replacing the text. The text currently says generically header. We're going to replace that with whatever is inside of the variable current. So we know what current is because we requested it over here, basically. And now we're saying replace what heading 1 currently says with what is in the variable current. So h1 there isn't controlling the size of the header. That's being done by the HTML. The size of the header? Yeah, I mean, in this case, the h1 is just an identifier. It's not really trying uh, yeah, it's more like an identifier. There's everything on the screen basically is an object, and we're trying to reference a specific object on the screen, and this is a way there. We're saying there's a heading one, and it's inside of a data role of header. So let's change its text to be this current text. Okay, uh, press enter. On this next line, what we also want to do is make the make that nav bar button glow. Remember it glowed a little it glowed earlier uh, to show that we're on that page. 
So now via JavaScript, we'll make it glow. So that means when we go to the art screen, the art button will glow. When we go to the PC screen, the PC button will glow. And so what that will be is we have to do a couple of things. One is to remove the ability for it to still be active, but that it then it, but that it then glows. So we've got jQuery again. Data roll nav bar. So the object on screen that is a that is a nav bar let me just check something before we go on okay so um, there's the object on the screen nav bar data roll nav bar and there is a uh, all all of the all of this nav bar is made from bullet points and they're active links. So furthermore, we have to target the individual ones because if we don't target the individual particular button, all of them will become blue, like that they're all active. So we have to say no, just the one that we currently are on. So we're on home. Only home should be active. When we go to art, only art should be active. So continuing here, still in the in the quotes we'll say a because it's an active link it's a it's a clickable link dot ui dash btn dash active this is going to remove as a safeguard uh, this should remove all of the. This should prevent all of the buttons from being active uh, with this method. Finally, here dot remove class. The way that they are active is because they have a class. They have some CSS that makes it look active. So that's a method. And inside of the parentheses, specifically, we say which class are we removing? This is the built-in um, Java uh, jQuery mobile which is UI-BTN-active. That, that is the same as before there. We're basically saying if there are any buttons that are active, remove that. Take away it being take, take it away looking active. And then on the next line we'll say but only make the current button the one that should be active. the next line. On the next line we're going to write something very similar again, data roll nav bar, but instead of this whole part here it'll be a little different. So dollar sign, parentheses, quotes, brackets, data, role, equals, navbar, like before. This time it's just simply going to be A. Now we're saying, depending on which button is active, that's the one we actually want to make it glow. So we'll have the method each, open close parentheses. And I'm going to break each into a couple of lines there. 
each is jQuery, which uh, is we haven't talked really about loops in this class, but if you have any experience in other programming languages about loops, a loop lets us do something over and over and over. And the syntax of a loop in plain JavaScript is very long. This basically turn, combines all of those lines of JavaScript into a short jQuery line that will let us loop. And what we're looping through is every button. There's more than one button on the screen. All the buttons on my nav bar are defined as active links, as A tags. So on each of them, do the following. <coughs> what we'll do is, back on line 9, where you've got the each uh, method, we'll write function, open close, parentheses, open close curly brace, so another anonymous function. And just like I did before, where this anonymous function started right here, and then I broke it down and put it down here, I'm going to do the same thing here, where I'm going to break this to the next line and put it next to that one. What's going to happen inside of that uh, function is it's going to check now finally um, is the current page that we're on named the same as what the button is named. So basically this will work because we've got we're going to have a section it's going to have a data title of home, an ID of home, and then also the button will be linking to home. So this will work when all of those are consistent. So art and art, PC and PC, home and home. And when we create the sections for PC and, and art, we'll have data title PC, ID PC, and data title art and ID art. So in order for that to work, back here, line 10, we're going to write if, open, close parentheses, open, close, open uh, curly brace, and then on the next line, close the curly brace. What the if does, which we'll look at much more extensively later, is to check if something is true. We're going to check, is the name of the, uh, the button on the nav bar the same as the name that's inside of the data title? If it is, then we'll make the nav bar button glow. If it's not, then it won't glow. It should glow because when we go to the art screen, we'll have a data title of art, and the button is called art and therefore the button will glow. So in here, if we're, we're checking, so this time we'll have the dollar sign, open, close, parentheses, and this keyword called this. This is checking. We can have multiple objects that we can deal with in jQuery or JavaScript, and this will mean the most current one, basically this one that we've clicked on, so this one that we've clicked on, let's check something about this one that we clicked on. Dot text, open, close, parentheses. We're going to check the text of that button. That button is either going to say home, or art, or PC. So we're just saying, what does the text of that button say? Which button? This button, the one that I've currently clicked on. We're going to check what that text is. Space, 
this is a new one, equals, equals, equals. Three equal symbols together with no spaces. We've seen previously having an equals where we had like var current equals something and the single equals takes the value on the right and puts it into the variable on the left. So we've seen that before. To fill a variable with a value, it's a single equals. We have the double equals, which is to check, is the thing on the left the same thing as the thing on the right? So double equals checks to see if this is true. Is the thing on the left the same as the thing on the right? Then the triple equals is then we get into data types because we have a data type of numbers and text and boolean and other things. So here we're checking is the thing on the right exactly the uh, the thing on the left the same as the thing on the right and its data type. Because I don't want to check that is the number one the same as the word one or to check if they're equal or not. What we're checking for is current. <clears throat> current comes from up here. We've defined current. Current comes from checking what's in data title. Data title will be home. And here we're checking. Is the text of the button I clicked on, which is home, is it exactly the same as the current variable, which should be home? If it is, next line, this is inside of the curly brace. jQuery again. This dot. Well, this again means this particular button that we've clicked on. Now that we've, uh, now that we've assured ourselves of something, we're going to do the final step, which is to make the button the button glow, this button, the button that's currently been clicked. Add class. And again, the way we make buttons glow or anything change is through CSS. There's a, there's a CSS class we're going to add to this button. So that's the method, uh, the command to add a class to a button. So particularly the class here in quotes is UI dash btn dash active. So we saw UI btn active. A couple of times here. The first times we saw it was to deactivate all buttons uh, just in case. Then here we're checking the button itself and then activating it. So let's save it. Let's run it. Let's take a break. Let's see if this works. Uh, we'll be back at 740. And when we do, we'll go on.